Tony Alford leaves Ohio State for Michigan. This is going to be a fun one. So Tony Alford left Ohio State. It's a done deal, and the Buckeye Nation is not happy about it. Here's here's a few headlines that I found. Tony Judas Alford quits Ohio State to join the dark side, stealing <laughs> spring pa- practice plans and more. That's from uh, Land Grant Holy Land. And they said goodbye and good riddance. Ohio State football, Tony Alford's move to Michigan is hard to understand. And I love the subtitle. The former Ohio State football coach decided to make a move to Michigan. It's a move that is hard to understand. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hang on. I think they, I like they I need an that. editor over there at uh, Scarlet and Game. Then at Cleveland.com, they said, Tony Alford's Michigan exit hurts because he was the last coach fans expected to betray the Buckeyes. And so this this is the one that you had pointed out. would pull, uh, pull a couple of quotes from this story. Former Ohio State running back coach Tony Alford crossed the battlegrounds and he will not be welcomed back. This, this is a tough one. They, they're really upset about this. Yeah. Perhaps you've forgotten that Michigan is still under NCAA investigation for stealing signs during their recent rise to Big Ten power. Perhaps Alfred has lost touch with the intense emotions his Buckeyes felt after learning their losses to UM were allegedly tainted. Or perhaps the former OSU assistant has signed a big enough contract to ignore his old allegiances. Though it should be noted, no running backs coach earned a higher 2023 salary than Alfred. The, which I think brings up a very good question, which you're probably about to talk about. Go ahead. No, go ahead, ask it. <laughs> well, okay. So if it's not about the sanctions, potential sanctions, and if it's not about the money, why did he leave Ohio State for Michigan? I'm going to upset Buckeye's battle cry. <laughs> and I like the dude. <laughs> culture (laughs) and we can't do anything but speculate as we say every week we are not professionals we are not insiders we are just fans we can only go off of what we've heard something is up something has gone wrong so in 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 what i find interesting is you know never never underestimate fans abilities to turn on a coach that they they once loved because they're saying some bad things about him. But now here's here's some stats on Tony Alford. He's got 29 years of experience as a running backs coach. He's coached wow. and developed six. And this is, okay, so coached and developed six 1,000-yard backs in his nine seasons at Ohio State. These are the running backs that gave Michigan so much trouble. His running backs have earned major national awards. He was a 2015 Rivals.com top 25 recruiter. All of his starting running backs went on to be drafted in the NFL. He's still a really good recruiter. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's, uh, I got to remember exactly. I can pull up his 247 um, composite and see exactly what he's been able to do, but I'm pretty sure he's still a really good recruiter. And in fact, a bunch of, or not, I shouldn't say a bunch, but I think a couple of five-star running backs actually said that they they're looking at Michigan now because he's there for whatever reason. It looked like this last season that um, Ohio state was kind of doing like a pocket passer sort of situation. Mm-hmm. The thing is though, I think I, I thought they ran the ball this last season more than they, they normally do because Normally they're putting up four or five hundred yards of offense through the air. This season I felt like they they I don't think that they put up that much that often, but like um oh my gosh, I've already forgotten his name, the quarterback. Kyle McCord. Kyle McCord, yeah. I thought Kyle McCord was still he he was he was dropping back to pass uh quite a bit, but then also they were handing the ball off a lot more. He wasn't like running out. They didn't do like the quarterback design runs that they used to do. They didn't have him like roll out and do the play action pass kind of stuff a lot. I don't think correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, but I don't know. They just, they felt like a really vanilla offense to me, but that, but actually because yeah. they were running the ball, I, I thought that they were actually running the ball a lot more than they usually do. As I've said a million times at this point, the reason that it didn't go anywhere though, was because, Ohio State's offensive line was having some issues this season. And then at some point, uh, Ryan Day took over 
play calling duties and he started trying to throw the ball more i think i think but i i guess the reason i'm saying that though is because i've seen a lot of stuff on twitter of people saying oh you know you you just hired the running backs coach from the running game that you've been clowning for the last three years and as i said in my short no michigan fan was laughing at ohio state's running game ohio state has had a ton of really good running backs they still have really good running backs the fact that they got mm-hmm. quinshawn judkins to transfer there is huge he is amazing travion henderson is amazing all of those running backs were amazing their offensive line has oh. noticeably gone down in quality as the ryan day era progresses well and and to some extent the the comment doesn't make sense doesn't necessarily apply because you can take somebody who is performing average at one spot, move them to another spot and they'll perform much better. Mike Sanders. Again, that comes back to culture. Yeah. I, we, we've seen coaches who I, uh, Rich Rod is probably a good one. He was doing great at West Virginia. comes to Michigan and doesn't do as well. Yeah. There was a culture issue at Michigan that prevented him from doing well. It, it doesn't necessarily matter that that Michigan fans may have been, you know, mocking Michigan's running game. You, you take that same coach and put him in a good environment and he's, he could be a lot better. It remains to be seen. I watched a few videos of people talking about this, and, and these were the points that were coming up as to what they're saying as to why why he may have left. One of them was that he didn't receive a contract extension when other coaches did. Yeah, I don't understand and, that one. Well, I don't understand it either because if he's been at Ohio State for nine years and he yeah. was the guy, and, and what I've heard is that he and Ryan Day were pretty tight. And so for him not to get a contract extension is a bit of a, a slap in the face, stab in the back kind of thing. I Yeah, I guess, unless, unless there's actually something to this whole, because he was also the run game coordinator. And the run game coordinator, mm-hmm. obviously, you need an offensive line to run to run the ball. So maybe there was some disconnect between him being able to recruit offensive line players if he was supposed to do that. There is an O-line coach that's supposed to be doing something, you would think. Yeah. So I'm really not sure. I mean, that would it would make sense to me that if he's the run game coordinator, maybe Ryan Day was having issues with how the run game was being played anyway. And that makes sense. They were trying to run the ball a lot and I don't think did it very well, especially against Michigan. So maybe, maybe that has something to do with it, but I don't know. To me, I would look at the offensive line before I looked at the running backs coach. (laughs) Number two is the possibility of him leaving was brought up in January. They were upset because it sounds like he found out in January that he was, he was already talking to Michigan. And so, but he stuck around. Uh, Alfred himself replied on the thread saying, this is not true. Yeah. That he had, he had only talked to Michigan. He'd only talked to Sharon Moore in the past week, not two months ago, just a week ago. The third one is interesting timing because coaches don't normally leave the week before spring practice. So spring practice starts Monday. He left OSU last week. There's hey. two things there. One that, Sharon Moore was coming dangerously close to not having a running backs coach for spring practice. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, but also like, okay. Yeah. It, a, um, a coach generally doesn't leave the week before spring practice. Uh, Mark D'Antonio was the head coach at Michigan state and left what in the middle of February. Yeah. He waited long enough to get his bonus and then left. So <laughs> that was, that was a pretty raw deal. Yeah. Obviously two very different circumstances, but I don't really think that the timing matters. I think that it, it was, I mean, if, if Sharon Moore didn't, I, I, <laughs> they didn't know whether or not Mike Hart was coming back until this last week. And then they found out he's not hope he's doing okay. That that's, that's the reason there's no reason to be like, Oh, he was obviously going to be, you know, shafted at Ohio state, they were pushing him out or something. And that's that the timing explains that that's not true. The timing is because it sounds like Mike Hart didn't know what he was doing until the last minute. The fourth thing there is uh, coaches don't usually make lateral moves unless they have to. That one's, I mean, that one's iffy. I, I don't know that that means anything other than he just made a lateral move. I don't know that, I don't know that I would read anything into that. There was a coach 
I can't remember who it was. The head coach of somewhere, Boston College, I think. Yeah. Le- left from being the head coach at Boston College to being an assistant with like the Bears or some NFL team. Now I get it. It's from Boston College to the NFL, but he's an assistant. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I-, I think coaches are human beings who leave for any number of reasons. I didn't, you know. I mean, it ties into the next one there. I mean, Chip Kelly was the head coach at UCLA, right? Yeah, yeah. So he left UCLA to well, be the OC at OSU. But that one, I kind of understand because Chip Kelly was going to be on the chopping block here soon because UCLA right, well, wasn't doing very well. So this one, though, that it's possible Chip Kelly drove him out. I think I heard this on Locked On Big Ten, and and he wasn't claiming to know that this was the case. He was He was suggesting that maybe this was a possibility. Chip Kelly comes in and he has a specific plan for the offense and uh, Tony Alford wasn't getting with the program. And so it was kind of like trying to find a way to push him out. What, what does this say about the impending NCAA hammer coming down? And, And what does this say about the, the possibility of, of Michigan getting sanctioned and, Tony Alford, maybe knowing how, okay, so the rumor that OSU, that Ryan Day was the one who called out Michigan and reported Michigan, what does Tony Alford know about that? For my money, I don't know why you would leave a team like Ohio State to go to a team that's about to get the hammer from the NCAA. That seems like a bad move. Unless you know it's not going to happen. Unless... You think it's going to be worse at Ohio State? I mean, or, I mean, okay, so let's play with this a second. There's there's a lot going on here. Um, He could think that Michigan's not actually going to get the hammer. He might even still not know. None of us really know what the NCAA is going to do until the NCAA does something. And the NCAA, I feel like, doesn't even really know what they're going to do until they do something. So who knows what's going to come of that? At this point, no evidence has come out that implicates anyone other than Connor Stallions, the American hero, uh, in in the the sign stealing nonsense. Yeah. So I don't think that he's I don't think that Tony Alford is necessarily concerned about that. He could actually be concerned with what potentially might be coming down at Ohio State with the um, what what was it? The 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 impermissible access of practice footage from other teams or something like that. And again. Who knows what's actually going on with that? We don't know any new evidence. I believe it was reported that that did happen. Ohio State is being investigated for that, I believe. But we don't actually know if there's any teeth to that. So withhold judgment until we know what's going on. Tony Alford might be caught in the middle of all this too. Right now, he might just be looking at the difference between Ohio State and Michigan and saying, Michigan likes to run the ball. Ohio State doesn't really like to run the ball. Chip Kelly, he's a Pac-12 offense kind of guy i believe i think he really likes to throw the ball so if i'm the running backs coach i'm gonna be like all right i mean my guys are gonna get you know the the put on the back burner in this new offensive system so what am i gonna do i should probably go somewhere where they're gonna use me all the time freaking he could go he could be thinking right now literally he's gonna put in a couple years at michigan and then go take the oc job somewhere or maybe even become a head coach because he'll he'll be featured, his backs will be featured at Michigan. Yeah. Because that's I, all know, they do. I don't know that he would go anywhere after Michigan. So he is he's been coaching for 31 years. He's been a running backs coach for 29 years. I mean, at this point, if you haven't found your head coaching job, I don't know that you ever will. Maybe he just likes being a running backs coach then, which again. Makes sense why you'd choose Michigan. That's all Michigan does. Buckeyes battle cry. Uh, yeah, we feel your pain. We understand. He could have gone anywhere but chose U of M. My goodness. I'm not feeling any pain. I'm excited. Well, we said the same thing about Madison. Why? Why? Why Ohio State? Why? <sighs> okay, Clarence Edwards says maybe he knows this could be Ryan Day's last season, plus Michigan is old school, between the line, power run to play action style of offense. Yep. Sam Hartman's looking downfield for Adrian Carter. Oh! Carter almost has a one-handed pitch. Almost. 